Hi guys, I'm meteorologist Alexandra Cranford. I'm coming to you from our local weather expert forecast center at WWL TV. And I just wanted to do a quick little update on something that people ask me about all the time during hurricane season. And that is where do these names come from? Who picks the names? How do you determine the names? Um, where do you get the new names after names are retired? So I just thought I'd hop on today and just talk to you guys a little bit about that. If you're curious, this is something that I love. I love names. Um, and it's really interesting to me to see the hurricane name lists and you might be interested in it too actually my name alexandra but some people call me alex uh, that pops up again in 2022 so i'm excited about that you may find your name or someone you know uh, their name on these lists so here is the deal with the hurricane names you may know some of this before or have heard some of this before but i just kind of wanted to give a quick overview so the names um were were invented or the idea of names were come up uh, that was come up with uh many decades ago in the 50s especially to kind of make it easy for people to understand what is out there it makes it easy to identify the different storms and especially to warn people so it's not just some vague uh, storm that's heading your way once you give it a name it's kind of easier to talk about and especially at the peak of the season which we almost are at uh, it happens on September 10th that's the official peak date of hurricane season in the Atlantic there might be three or four different areas out there so it is easier if you give them each a name and it kind of makes it easier for people to understand what you're talking about there are six lists of names officially um, and they are recycled every six years so you may notice some of the same names popping up like Arlene, Andrea, um, Barry, Bertha, names like these they've come up before and um, they will come up again unless something happens to take it off the list which we'll talk about in a second. The biggest question I get is who comes up with them? Where do these come from? They were originally um, names determined by the National Hurricane Center, but now they're maintained and they're set by the World Meteorological Organization. So um, an international uh, group from um, uh, different countries and they meet once a year and they maintain the lists and they retire names and they add the new names. So they are the ones. It's a little mysterious. I don't actually know how <laughs> the inside of that meeting goes where they determine exactly which name gets picked to replace if the K storm is gone to replace it with a new K name um, so I'm a little bit interested in that too but it is set by the World Meteorological Organization and they pick the new names that would sub in for any names that get retired the history of it is that it these names started in 1953 uh, before that of course storms were named um, in a different way and in 53 they started with the lists of names all female at first in fact before 53 um, and in the 1800s and things like that uh, it looks like the storms were either kind of named arbitrarily in some cases like if a ship encountered a certain storm that storm might be named by that ship um, or saints days um, the feast days for different um, saints were also used so for example today is the feast day of St. Clair and so if there were a storm and this was hundreds of years ago maybe we would have a storm uh, that would get the name Claire um, because of that so now we have these lists of names again they started in 1953 the six different lists, they used to be all female um, designated names and in 1979, the names were updated, the lists were updated with male names alternating between male and female. Um, each list has 21 names. There are no names for Q, U, um, X, Y, or Z because those are pretty uncommon names. Um, and names of course are retired for deadly or costly storms. Um, so this is, um, just a, a graphic or a, um, a box or a chart showing all of the different names that have been retired. And that happens, of course, when a storm is really um, deadly or costly or just a significant storm that people will remember. Um, you wouldn't want to have another um, really recognizable storm come up again with the same name uh, because people already you know have something in their minds for that and it would be kind of a sensitive issue so they get retired if they're costly or deadly um, that's determined again by the national um, or world meteorological organization and something kind of interesting is that we've had all of these names retired since the 1950s um, but none were retired for the previous year, um, last year, because uh, today or this this year's 2020 World Meteorological Organization meeting where they meet to go over all of these things and look at the name list and sub in new names and retire storms from the previous year, 
and that didn't happen because of the pandemic. So um, the word from them is, well, the, the list doesn't come up again that we went through last year for another six years. So there's a bit of time. So they're planning, I think, in spring 2021, their next year meeting to go over any storms that need to be retired from the 2019 season. Um, and then they will sub in new names for, um, you know, probably Dorian. Um, and before that, it was in 2018, the most recent names that were retired were Florence and Michael, you may remember that. Um, in 2017, it was an especially, um, there, were, there were a lot of uh, four different storm names retired, Harvey, Irma, Maria, and Nate. And just going back to, 2005, there were five. There was Dennis, Katrina, um, Rita, Stan, and Wilma. All of those were retired. Um, let's see, I think that's mainly what I wanted to tell you guys about. Oh yeah, a lot of people ask about this. Um, what happens if we go over 21 names? Of course, um, you guys remember in 2005 where there were 28 name storms um, well over the alphabetical list that we went through all the names for. And so it goes to the Greek alphabet after that. Um, Ricardo Lecomte, the sports guy, was asking me about this uh, a couple of days ago, kind of foreseeing that. So yeah, the Greek alphabet would be used. And this year, with NOAA's new forecast for the number of named storms, if we get to the forecast that they have, up to 25 named storms, that would bring us um, four or five names into the Greek alphabet. So that would put us at Delta. It goes Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. And then remember in 2005, we made it all the way to Zeta. We had um, uh, five or six different um, Greek named storms after we finished all of the alphabetical storms. So don't wanna to talk too much about that season. Um, of course, no one uh, is super fond, I'm sure, of the 2005 um, activity, of course, that we had around here. So um, just wanted to kind of update you on that. If we do go over our list this year, we would go into the Greek names, and you may remember that from then. So I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. This is just kind of a quick little lesson or a quick little kind of overview on hurricane names. Again, I would love, I think maybe one of my... <laughs> like top picks for a job would be if I didn't do meteorology at WWL would be like picking the hurricane names. I would love to do that. I just think it would be so much fun um, to be able to pick these different lists of names. Um, and maybe you think that would be cool too. So all sorts of names are coming up. One thing I wanted to point out is that the rest of the year for 2020, um, the next name would be Josephine. Um, and then all the names after that are pretty easy to pronounce. Remember we had Isaias. It seems like every year there are a couple of hard ones. Um, we also had Edward um, that was um, uh, spelled in the way that it was uh, supposed to be pronounced like that. And by the way, the National Hurricane Center does give um, phonetical or phonetic um, um, kind of like uh, guidelines for how you're supposed to say these different names. So coming up next would be Josephine, Kyle, Laura, Marco, Nana, Omar, Paulette, Renee, Sally, and Teddy for the remainder of this year. All right, guys, that'll do it for now. Thanks for joining me. Um, we'll have more coming up on um, Eyewitness News at 5, 6, and 10. You can uh, join us for updates on what's going on with that um, wave that we're watching out in the Atlantic as well. That could probably soon be a tropical depression and maybe even eventually tropical storm Josephine. So we are anticipating that to happen. Um, so more updates will be coming up for that. Not a threat to us in the Gulf of Mexico at this point, but of course we're watching as things are expected to increase as far as hurricane activity goes. Um, of course, getting into the end of August and beginning of September. All right, take care guys. Have a good rest of your afternoon on this Tuesday and we will talk later.